So Todd, uh, obviously this still you still have a couple more days to go this week, but how does it look like Derek handled uh, you know the, the thudding that he got yesterday in pads? Yeah, I think he's been progressing well. You know, certainly he's done everything we've asked him to do, and you know that'll be a decision uh, left to you know people above me on the food chain. But you know, I think things have been progressing uh, you know encouragingly. Knowing that he's back in the fold, how to distribute the carries, how much he can handle, and will some of it just be determined on how he does in the game? Yeah, you know, I, th I think we we've talked a little bit throughout the course of this year just about load management and how it's it's tough to sometimes put a finite number on things. And you know, I think that you know, if I'm given uh, the green light with Derek playing, then we're just gonna have to monitor him in the game. And you know, Coach Dews does a great job of keeping an eye on his guys and rotating those guys through anyway. So. Uh, probably have a lot to do with the flow of the game. When, you know, here's a guy who's used to you know, 20, 25, even more carries per game, uh, to kind of get in rhythm, is it hard to figure out what number would, would be right, you know, assuming you can't give him that amount? Sure, I think everybody's wired different, you know, and I think that uh, I think that different runners have different styles and kind of see the game a little different with, with more touches. Um, but but again, I think the flow of the game will kind of dictate that. It's hard to go into it saying, okay, we're going to give them this many and then give them a break. You know, it kind of uh, depends on the situation in the game. So, Obviously, uh, what kind of advantage could it be to have that potential three-headed monster with Derek and Dontrell and Deontay? Yeah, you know, anytime you can have playmakers back into the mix, uh, it's a good thing. You know, more ingredients is, uh, makes for more fun than the recipes, you know, so... Uh, excited, you know, about the potential of having that that three-headed monster, and uh, you know that that kind of uh, versatility, and uh, we'll see how it unfolds if if the opportunity presents itself. What have you seen from the Bengals, and maybe what kind of a challenge do they present, you know, for your offense? Yeah, playing with a lot of confidence. You know, uh, certainly they're a versatile group. You know, if you just look at things from a, a broad picture standpoint, there are a whole bunch of different coverages and tags and fronts and all that. Uh, so you have to do your best to, to boil it down, you know, and uh, I think they do a nice job of making things look the same. Uh, certainly disciplined and well coached, so uh, we have our work cut out for us. Not sure if Hendrickson is going to play yet or not, but how big a difference has he made for that defense this year? Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, he's an attitude and, and a demeanor guy that, that is a leader on that defense and, and brings it every snap. You know, uh, his stats speak for themselves, but he plays hard and, and uh, certainly is uh, one of the motivating leaders on that defense. How much is Taylor maybe, I don't want to say back to himself, but since the early season stuff with the knee and the cramps and, and all of that, how much do you feel like he's the guy he was before all that? Yeah, I think as a whole, as an offense, we're starting to see a little bit more consistency, and uh, that's all we can ask for is just you know being the same player each day. Uh, you know, I think we've we've had every player on our offense go through some patches where maybe they didn't look quite you know like they uh, expect themselves to, or we do. But uh, I think we've been growing each and every week. Talked about uh, the edge rushers yesterday, Bengals. The challenge there. It's always important to protect the quarterback, but up against this defense, just how much more of an emphasis will it be going against the Bengals? Sorry, I had to take a little drink there. Um, yeah, it's certainly it's always uh, something that we're aware of. You know, you have guys that uh, are talented edge rushers on just about every defense we play nowadays, uh, and and we need to make sure we take care of the the edges uh, so that Ryan can you know obviously progress downfield and have enough time to step up in the pocket. So uh, we have a plan for that each and every week. They have a couple of talented guys, but it's not the first team that we've played that that has. So um, you know, hopefully we can execute the plan as well as we have uh, in recent weeks. With Okunjobi out now on IR and the, the injuries they do have on the defensive line, does that make it maybe tougher to, to you know, do you prepare to see those guys or do you also have to look at some of the guys that have stepped in over the season? How do you plan for that? Yeah, they have some versatile pieces. So I think you need to look more at the structure maybe than the personnel. Uh, you know, obviously we had three quarters of a game's worth uh, you know, of the playoff game against the Raiders to kind of uh, take a peek at some things. But uh, overall, we got to let our rules be our rules and go in on one-on-one -on -one matchups. With guys like A.J. Brown and Julio Jones, you know, receivers that you want to get involved early, how do you go about balancing that, whether it's scripting or just trying to make sure that everybody gets their touches and they're involved and kind of tuned into the game more? Yeah, I think it's a process. You know, as you set the game plan in the early parts of the week, uh, you want to make sure that you have some things where the guys look at look at the game plan and say, oh yeah, that that one's for me, you know. 
Uh, and I think that's important. And then certainly you want to find ways to be versatile uh, early in games and, and make sure everybody's in tune and involved in the game. Um, you know, but a lot of that also unfolds as you see what they're trying to do to you uh, schematically in their game plan. You know, and you say, okay, we're getting a lot of this coverage. Now we can go to this counter punch and, and so on. So. What themes, Todd, that you guys had as you sort of self-reflected, you know, during those during that off week, uh, maybe a theme or two that you tried to work on especially? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, I think we've grown throughout the course of the year, and I think one of the things that was really encouraging is you kind of saw – progressions in some areas, you know, and uh, we did become more consistent in some things. But we're just scratching the surface of, of you know, where we want to be as an offense and where we want to go as a football team and doing our part and getting us there. So, um, you know, I, I think there was a, a little bit of a balance between, okay, these are some schemes we can rely on and have executed well and have improved upon. Uh, and then there's some leaving some meat on the bone and missed opportunities. So uh, certainly hungry would be a, a way that I would describe, uh, you know, that bye week uh, leaving us. Mike, Kevin Byer have been among the guys who kind of talked about being wary of the idea, hey, everybody's back, we've got the number one seed, we're home. But have you guys, have you had any conversations about, hey, we can't, you know, think that everything's set up for us? Yeah, luckily, I think our culture here has been such that we expect people to go out and execute at a certain level, regardless of who they are and what their name is. And so when that uh, when that expectation doesn't fluctuate with the personnel that's in there, it makes it easier to then, uh, you know, hold those people to a standard when they come back. Um, You know, I don't think anyone here is real comfortable. And I think uh, we've done a nice job uh, of challenging ourselves, uh, you know, to try to look for ways to improve. And, and certainly no one's gotten fat and happy. We've left far too much meat on the bone to be fat and happy. So offensively for us, there's a long way to go before we reach that level of consistency we're looking for. Um, you know, and, and I think that that leaves us um, a long ways away from ever being content. Red zone scoring efficiency, that seemed to spike over those last three games. What were some of the things that you guys did well to to cause that improvement? You know, sometimes I think that's an area of situational football that can be a a little bit streaky, and sometimes that has to do with confidence. And so it can snowball sometimes in a good or or a bad way. We finished strong, and and certainly that's been a strength of our offense around here uh, for the last few years is, you know, uh, ranking pretty high in that touchdown efficiency. But Again, I think in a game-by-game game basis, you just have to uh, have great detail and great, uh, you know, full, uh, all-encompassing, takes-all-11 mentality down there to be able to go execute and, and produce uh, in the red zone.